Hi, I'm scientist Rachel I'm here with my scientist friends, Buddy, Sunny and Jack. We are still in waves, energy and information. We are in chapter one, lesson five. We're in the very last lesson and we are doing activities one through four. You will definitely need something to write with today and something to write on. So uh, we have been studying all chapter long. We have a question. How does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf across distance? And in order to answer this question, we've had to answer another question, which was how does sound get from one place to another? So we've been working with Maya Martinez. She's a park superintendent and she wrote a letter to the marine scientist, that's you. Um, and it says, I am looking forward to reading what you have discovered about how mother dolphins and their calves communicate across distances to find one another. Before you send me your response, you may want to return to the reference book, the reference book Patterns in Communication. It may help you with your research. We have done a lot of work as marine scientists to investigate how mother dolphins communicate. And in this lesson, we're gonna work together to write an explanation for the park superintendent to explain what we already know. So let's break this down. When a mother dolphin communicates with her calf, what is the source of the sound? Scientist Jack says the source is the calf. Scientist Buddy says the source is the mother dolphin. Drum roll. Scientist Buddy is correct. So when a mother dolphin communicates with her calf, she is a source because she is starting the sound. If the mother dolphin is a source of the sound, who is the listener? Scientist Jack says it's the calf. Scientist Buddy says it's the mother dolphin. So drum roll. Scientist Jack is correct. If the mother dolphin is a source, then the listener is her baby calf. So the park superintendent has suggested that we go back to patterns in communication, um, our reference book to look for more information about dolphin communication. The information could help explain how mother dolphins communicate to their baby calves. Before, while I'm reading this, I want you to turn to page 17 in your notebooks or any notebook that you have. I don't care what piece of paper you use. I need you to be writing, you need to write down this question. How does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf across a distance? As I'm reading, write down notes that are gonna help you to answer this question. I know that dolphins are marine mammals, and so I'm starting with, chap with page eight of uh, Patterns in Communication. Introduction. Whales, including dolphins, seals, sea lions, and walruses are all marine mammals. Marine mammals are not very closely related to the fish and sharks that live in the ocean with them. In fact, marine mammals are much more closely related to other mammals that live on land, like hippos or bears. Just like their relatives on land, marine mammals need to breathe air. Marine mammals communicate for a variety of reasons. For example, they communicate to find mates or to keep groups of animals together. At other times, marine mammals communicate while feeding. Baby marine mammals rely on their mothers for food and care. So some marine mammal mothers and their babies called calves communicate in order to stay together. Animals cannot see very far underwater, so they can only communicate with visual signals when they are very close together. When dolphins and other whales communicate underwater, they usually do it by making sounds. The sound that one animal makes is a sound wave that moves through the water to the listener. Marine mammals use patterns of sound that mean specific things to the listener. Unlike whales, walruses spend time above water on ice and land, so they communicate with sounds both above and below the water. The sound walruses make on land travel as sound waves through the air, and the sounds they make underwater travel as sound waves through the water. Bottlenose Dolphin Communication Bottlenose dolphins are found in the ocean all over the world and are one of 30 species of dolphins. Dolphins are a type of whale, part of a group called tooth whales. Bottlenose dolphins are very social and often live in groups with 15 to 100 animals. Calves rely on their mother's milk for food during their first years of life. 
Bottlenose dolphins have large brains and are considered very intelligent. When bottlenose dolphins are very close together, they can communicate by touch and by body language, but sounds are much more important for their communication. Bottlenose dolphins make very high-pitched squeaks and whistles. They also make clacking sounds, buzzes, quacks, pops, and yelps. Some of their whistles sound like crickets chirping at night. They can whistle and clack at the same time. To make sounds, bottlenose dolphins move air around in their heads and sometimes out their blowholes. Unlike humans, dolphins do not have vocal cords, but they have two sets of structures that vibrate in their nasal passages so that they can make different sounds at the same time. Bottlenose dolphins use sound to communicate with their social groups. Mothers and calves use whistles to find each other when they are separated. So here are some things that I wrote down as I was reading. On page nine, I found three pieces of information that would seem very important to me. Baby marine mammals and their mothers communicate in order to stay together. Dolphins make sound underwater. A sound wave moves through the water from one animal to another. On page 14, I found two pieces of information that were important. Sounds are important for dolphin communication and dolphins make squeaks and whistles. You can pause this part of the video and you can write down all these four, uh, five pieces of information that I have found if you would like. Um, on page 19 of your investigation books, you have a sound diagram. I need you to, to do this, please. You are more than welcome. Pause the video right here, take five, 10 minutes and label the sound diagram. If you don't have the sound diagram page, no big deal. You're gonna take a piece of paper and draw at the very top left-hand side, a mother dolphin. At the very bottom right-hand side, you're gonna draw a calf. There are four things I need you to write in the sound diagram. Number one, label the source and the listener. Number two, label what is traveling and draw an arrow to show the direction it's traveling. Number three, on your sound diagram, label what is moving a little but not traveling. And number four, explain how the sound gets from the mother dolphin to her calf. Make sure to include what is moving a little and what is traveling far. Again, please stop this part in the video and take 10 minutes to label the sound diagram with all four parts. We have a brand new vocabulary, or vocabulary word. It's uh, explanation. And it is a description of how something works or why something works. So Maya Martinez, the park superintendent, has asked us to write to her and explain how a mother dolphin communicates with her calf across the distance. Um, so we're going to be writing a scientific explanation for the superintendent. And this, again, is going to be a description of how or why something happens. There's three things um, a scientific explanation does. Number one, it answers a question about how or why something happens. Number two, it's based on the ideas we have learned through investigation and text. And number three, it has to be written for an audience. So we are gonna write a scientific explanation to answer the question, how does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf across a distance? So here's where I need you to get a brand new piece of paper. You're gonna write your name and today's date, and you're gonna write the question that you see there on the left. Um, and you're, we're going to write this together, so no worries. At any point in the time, stop the video if you need to. So based on what we've read so far, how do dolphins communicate across distances? Well, we know that they communicate through sound. So to find her calf when they are separated, the mother dolphin communicates through sound. So we know that the mother dolphin is a source and the baby calf is the listener. So to keep writing our explanation, what do we know about how waves travel that we can use to write about the sound waves of the mother's dolphin? So how do, how do waves travel? So we know that they whistle and we know that sound is a pattern. So here's what we're gonna write. 
When the mother dolphin whistles, that sound travels away from her in a pattern of motion called a wave. But now we need to explain what travels in this wave and be more specific, what travels in a sound wave that is coming from the mother dolphin. So what travels in this wave? If you said sound energy, you would be correct. So the sound energy travels through water all the way to the calf. The water itself only moves a little bit. So we are done. We have finished our explanation. You're gonna read it out loud. So how does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf across a distance? To find your calf when they are separated, the mother dolphin communicates through sound. When the mother dolphin whistles, that sound travels away from her in a pattern of motion called a wave. The sound energy travels through water all the way to the calf. The water itself moves only a little bit. So we are going to go back to our scientific guidelines. Did it answer a question? Yes. How does the mother communicate? Is it based on ideas we have learned from our investigation and text? Yes, we have um, information from our textbook um, that we put in our explanation. And was it written for an audience? Absolutely, it was written for Maya Martinez. She is the park superintendent. So in the very next lesson, we will begin to investigate exactly how sound energy travels. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Scientist Sandoval, Ms. Sandoval, and I will see you in a few days.